I'm concluding this uh, resources presentation, and I think we're open for questions. Great. Thank you, Sakup. That's great. Um, while the uh, there's a survey that's going to be posted, and you can fill that out, but as you do that, you could also type in your questions in the chat box. And we have an excellent question from um, Mark Reese, which is, the distinction between state and federal inspectors, and the question is, are they looking at the same things? And if you had a good inspection from the state, would you expect the same from the federal level? And I'm going to ask Trevor Urban to talk a little bit about that, um, the differences between the state and federal inspections and that relationship. Okay. One of, one of the issues uh, when I came on in 06 uh, was, you know, the state's telling us one thing, the EPA's telling us another, you know, wh what are we supposed to do as a producer and, and get two different sets of marching orders. And, well, we here in Region 7, we've tried to uh, close that gap by communicating with the states. Uh, we have uh, annual meetings with the states where we all get together and talk about issues so that we're, we're telling the producer the same thing so that they're getting the same same information from us as they'll get from the states. And the states go out with us and do inspections and vice versa. I'll go out with the states and make sure that I know what they're saying out there so that you know, we're not putting you in a box to not know, to, to to say, okay, well, the state told me to do this, and you get here and you say, well, that's wrong, and, and you're out of compliance. So, you know, that's upon us. We're supposed to And uh, to help the producers out, that's that's what you got to do. You've got to start that dialogue, and so because the producers should expect the state and the EPA to be looking at basically the same things when they're out there. This is a it's an important issue and one that comes up fairly frequently. Um, um, so if anybody else has any thoughts on that, any perspectives, feel free to jump in. Okay. Waiting to see if we get any more questions in the chat box. Um, Lisa McKinley, uh, our, uh, a CAFO inspector from our Region 4 in Atlanta, is, is participating, and I wondered if you could say a few words about that state-federal inspection relationship. Do you mind, Lisa? Hello? Yes, thanks. This is Lisa. Um, we try to, to really have a good relationship with the state, and we are working with each state. When we do go out, I would say 99% of the time we are going out with the state inspector. Uh, one of the things we found is that sometimes we may, uh, we, what we follow is anything that is in the permit. And so basically the state and the federal agency are looking for the same things and have the authority to look at the same things. Sometimes what we find is that sometimes EPA will put it example, we may have viewed aerial photographs that, that will cause us to spend more time in a land application field than the state might have done. Um, because something may have triggered an interest or something that could be a potential problem. Um, same thing with the states. There may be a situation where the state has received a complaint. So if they go out, they may spend a little more time than EPA would spend in a given area because they have reason to, to focus in that given area. But we do share the same authority. We are looking at the same things. Um, but a lot of times it depends on what kind of background and what has triggered the inspection as to how much detail we may go into different areas. This is Christine Blanton from North Carolina again, and I've worked with Lisa on some inspections. And in North Carolina, the regulatory agency here, we're on every farm every year. 
and there's us, the um, Soil and Water um, Conservation, um, they, the divi- I'm sorry, the Division of Soil and Water, they do an operations inspection every year. So our facilities get two state inspections a year, and that builds up, we build up a rapport with our producers. Um, as I'm sure in many, many states, there are a certain level of self-reporting involved in um, your permit. So we have to build that mutual trust. And we have producers that once we um, develop that rapport, they're able to contact us and ask the questions of, should I do this or should I do that? Or I'm considering doing X, Y, Z. Is that going to be a problem with my permit? And we are always more than happy to answer the question rather than go out there and find a problem after you've invested time and money and say, no, you can't do that. So in addition to your expenses you've already incurred, you know, perhaps there's going to be a financial violation involved. And, and we want to work with you to... Um, Um, perhaps on a facility, the EPA's come in and done an inspection following an incident we've already had. much. Um, one of the issues that uh, Trevor uh, hit on earlier in his presentation was on the importance of the permit as a shield to protect you from um, uh, lawsuits for violations. And I've asked him if he would talk a little bit more about that to explain what that really means for a producer that has a permit and the disadvantage for a producer that doesn't have a permit. Uh, one thing I mentioned was the 25-year, 24-hour storm event. You know, if, if you're operating your facility per your permit and you have a 25-year, 24-hour storm event and you have a discharge, that is basically an exempted discharge. Or, or and But the person down the road who thought uh, he or she uh, didn't need a permit and doesn't have a permit, it doesn't matter if you have a 25 25- to get that pass, and I failed to mention that. Also, uh, a placement of manure storage piles prior to uh, applying a field application. You know, best management practice trout stream, uh, you know, upstream from a trout stream, and... Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm trying- and and don't in in Iowa we have fields that are tiled, which basically means they they put uh, underground lines to drain water away. So if you've got a manure pile sitting within five ten feet of a tile, that's a direct conduit, and they usually flow for a couple miles and go. Trevor. I've been trying to keep an eye on the chat box and and see if other questions have come in. Uh, Sakib, have you noticed any that we haven't addressed yet? I don't think so. I I see that uh, some folks are responding to those uh, questions by typing them out. Yeah, great. Um, If anybody has some final questions? Please get them in, and um, otherwise, I think we're um, close to wrapping it up here. I really appreciate all the inspectors that have participated today, um, and really want to thank the producers for being willing to step forward and talk about their experience. Um, it really, it, it's incredibly helpful for us to understand your perspective. Um, I noticed that a lot of the folks on the that have tuned in today are um, are regulators as opposed to producers. And if you um, have an opportunity to promote this webcast, the archived version, to your producers, if you find that it might be useful to explain what happens during an inspection, um, we encourage you to do that, to direct them to the Learning Center website, and they can uh, look at this information on their own. 
if there's no more information uh, or no more questions, I want to thank everybody for your time this afternoon, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. And we'll be posting additional information on the website associated with the webcast uh, in the near future. So thanks, everybody.